All right, so we have arrived. We're in downtown Toronto right now. We are going to a mastermind event. It is December 30th at around 1.15 p.m. The event starts in 45 minutes. It's gonna be, we're gonna be working, scaling our businesses, basically planning out everything for 2023. Very excited for this. I'll be speaking too. So I brought Brandon along. He's my videographer. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is a seven figure agency owner. Let's go. All right, see you at the event, peace. So we got the pizzas. Yes, sir. Fuel up before the mastermind. That was the plan. We got this beautiful pizza here. We got Brandon. I'm gonna be giving a good speech in a bit, so you know, I gotta get that protein in. All right, let's dive in. Oh, that was good. All right, Brandon, your first time trying Blaze Pizza. How was it? It's fire. Shout Should out the goat LeBron James. Scale of 1 to 10, what would you give it? Honest rating. 10. 10? Yeah, that's fire. Oh. It's really good. <laughs> All right. After lunch, we made our way to the Mastermind event for my talk. I'm in the elevator. We've got Brandon, Nabil. What was your name, Sam? Sorry? Leanna. Leanna. Aaron. Aaron. What was your name, bro? Jason. Jason. All squads here. We've got the whole squad here. Not even the whole squad. <laughs> like 5% of MSU. Dude, I started this with a cold DM to that guy. 10, 10 months ago. 10 months ago. That's wild. Seven figure yeah. company from the ground up. And run right. Run right. <laughs> Alright guys, so thanks for having me here, Aaron. First of all, Aaron's a really good friend of mine. I thought I'd just tell you a little bit more about my story, who I am, and I hope to really inspire you because I feel like a lot of you were really at more so at the beginning phases of your like journey and into this business world, going into this online marketing world yourself. And I'm a bit older, I'm 28, so I'm sure you guys are a bit like what, early 20s, so around that age. So I want to tell you a little bit more about my story because when I started in this marketing world, it wasn't as prevalent and available as it is now, right? I graduated in 2016 from Queen's University in Kingston. I actually ended up doing a master's as well in 2017. It was a one year's master's. It was a business master's at the business school. And I did a master's with an, with an emphasis in entrepreneurship. And the program itself was 30 grand. So it was like a pretty high ticket offer. I didn't even know anything about it. I didn't even know the word high ticket existed back then. Um, this was in 2017. And basically what happened was for that time I was doing it, the whole purpose of the program was for you to start a business and generate income from it. But ultimately, I just like I kind of figured this out like halfway through the program that I wasn't going to learn from the teachers, but I was going to learn from my experience. But so what I did was I started a blog, and it's still alive. It's still alive today. It's called InfluenceDigest.com. So you know those ads you see on the sides of blogs and stuff like that. So they pay you at the time it was like a dollar for every thousand views or something like that. Um, maybe a bit more or less, something around that. So I started InfluenceDigest.com. I started. I used to. I was really into self help at the time, right? So I would like start. I would read self help books, put summaries online, and just roll the. And the blog actually caught a lot of traction. Within six months, I had a million active readers on this website. Even though it was like pretty cool, I wasn't really making much. I was making like five hundred dollars a month from Google AdSense, which was like kind of cool, but nothing like. I mean, not gonna like live on your own or have be any form of independent making 500 bucks a month. Well, actually, Queen's University called me back after I graduated, and they like they got wind that I was like make I, or I had a million readers on my website, all this stuff going on. So they said, Sir, can you come and give some lectures on digital marketing and like SEO and like what you're doing because it's obviously something's working. Like, I mean, from the outside, this is why you shouldn't always believe what you see on social media. Like, from the outside, I looked like this great 21 year old success. Meanwhile, on the inside, like I was making 500 bucks a month from AdSense, right? So. Keep in mind that like always keep yourself humble because you don't know what's like going on from the inside outside. Like just trust me on that. So I ended up giving a lecture. I actually gave a few lectures. They have a campus here in Toronto. So one day I gave a lecture on just SEO teaching like strategies, like you know, this is how you get viewers to your website, this is how I've been driving traffic, all that kind of stuff. And after the lecture, this is kind of where my whole like journey actually really started to, like take off or start, which was I got a call from a guy and he was like Hey, Surim, I'm, uh, I, I actually didn't attend your talk, but a friend of mine did, and he says like you're a really intelligent guy and you know a lot about marketing, and he, I think you can help me out. And I was like, okay, well, what do you need? And he said to me, well, I am a, I'm a consultant on the side. I'm a professor, but I'm also an artificial intelligence consultant on the side. You think you can help me get more clients? Like, I want to like, work with like, more like five, six-figure clients. At the time, I didn't know anything about this stuff. I was like, dude, like, 
I even told him, like, man, like, I'm going to be honest with you, I can help you out, but, like, no promises here. Like, I just, like, you know, want to make, like, get viewers to a website. And he was like, all right, man, I trust you. So he transferred me, like, interact, he transferred me $2,000 that day. He's like, all right, let's see what you can do. So I was like, dude, first thing I looked up, I was like, well, look, since you're a consultant and you're doing B2B, I would recommend going LinkedIn. Like, I was like, that was like my first guess, like, go LinkedIn. So I built up this whole marketing platform strategy for him. I ran it. And then, like, basically, I was like, all right, let's see what happens. Three weeks later, he calls me. And he's like, Sarim, whatever you did worked. And I was like, what? <laughs> what happened? He's like, oh, I just closed a $50,000 client. And I was like, oh, shit, this actually works. So he's like, let me introduce you to more professors. So I kind of ran a marketing agency for like three or four years. Now, it wasn't all like dandy and roses. Like after that first client, my next five clients kind of dropped off. And I started getting a little momentum really, like I got a lot of momentum really quickly. So actually just down the road from here on Richmond, on Spadina, I rented an office space. I was way out of my head. I was like a 21 year old kid being like, no, we're gonna freaking fill this place. We're gonna make this happen. Like we're gonna become millionaires. Like we're gonna run Toronto and all this stuff. So month four, we got evicted. And it was like everything tanked. No more clients coming through the door. In fact, the lease wasn't even in my name. It was in my friend's name. So one day, we actually got caught because I was parking and the landlord found out I was parking. And it was like some disaster of a situation. And I remember my last day, like, Things got so bad to the point where I'll never forget my banking, my TD bank account was, I had an overdraft limit of 1500. My bank account in 2017 hit negative 1487. So I had $13 that could get me an Uber back home. So I remember my friend called me, he's like, dude, landlord's coming in 30 minutes, pack everything up and get out before she arrives. Otherwise this was gonna get like way worse. And I had a client, my last client in there. And I was like, oh, cause we were like filming videos for them. So I packed everything up. Through the Uber, I remember the Uber cost eleven dollars to get home. So I was like, thank God I can make this happen. So I got the Uber, and then uh, yeah, we, I got home. And at that point, I was like, okay, well, just got evicted, broke as like I've ever been, and like, 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 literally no hopes of success at this point. Like, I, I like, like, no more clients are coming to me. So I remember that night, I was stressed out, but I said to myself, okay, like, let's figure this out. Let's see how we can make this work. Like, there must be, like, there must be a different way. Like, there's no way, like, I, like I'm gonna lose here. So I was like crying, like, I called my dad, I was like, I don't think I'm fit out to cut out to be an entrepreneur, like all this stuff, like it was like really like a tough time. It was like cold February too, it was like freaking minus 10 or something like that, and it was like snowing. So it was like the, the ambience really fit the situation. Um, anyways, during that night I was like, okay, let me just figure this out. So I basically set a goal for myself and I was like, okay, I need to just get all my shit to zero, like just get to zero. If I can get to zero, I, I'll get myself to a baseline. So I literally told myself, okay, like, no more going out with girls, no more partying, like, no more nothing. Like, I stopped, like, every form of, like, social interaction for the next four months. Like, I wasn't even watching Raptors games. And, like, if anyone knows me, like, I love Raptors. I just stopped everything, right? Like, and I was like, nothing. So for four months, I just rebuilt it up, and I was like, okay, well, the website was still generating some cash, so that was something. I rebuilt the consult the agency that we had at the time, started getting, like, calling up people, doing things the right way this time. But, like, like, I was, my problem was that I got cocky too early. I was like, oh, I'm the man, I'm 21 years old, all these people are coming to me. It fills your ego really quickly. But I'm glad I got humbled. I'm really glad I got humbled with all of this. I'd say about four months later, I finally got myself to a baseline of zero, which like paid off like all the debts, credit cards were racked up, everything like that, and I was like, okay, we're good. Um, and then, it was good. Like, I, we started building the agency steadily. We got it to around like a six-figure level over the next few years. And then, at that point, I kind of got like, I felt stagnant in what I was doing with my life. I was just like, and this might happen to some of you as well. And the reason I'm telling you this is like, so you can at least hear what I did. And I felt like I was getting stagnant with where I was going. I was like, you know what? Like, this is cool. I'm doing work for clients. I'm running an agency. This is it. Listen to me. Or like, I do work back and forth. And it was just this like, I felt like I was working a nine to five again, just like for five different people, like 10 different people. They were yelling at me, sir, go fix this, go fix this, go do this. And I was like, okay, well, like, I guess this is what it's like to be an entrepreneur, 10 different bosses. Actually, the one turning point actually for me now that I remember was I, the first high ticket event I ever uh, attended. One of my clients, she was nice enough to give me a ticket to, I don't know if you know who Robin Sharma is, he has the book The 5 a.m. Club. Yeah. So he's actually from Toronto, Robin himself. So mm -hmm. he held a, he holds an event every December here at the Ritz Carlton called the Titan Summit. And mm -hmm. he brings like all these big hitters, like Tom Billy was there, Canada Goose, Lou Lemon. So I was there, and this was like the full turning point. I was like, holy shit, things are different here. I'll never forget, I was sitting down at this event. I was like 23 at the time, still like not really rich, nothing really going for me. Like, I mean, we were okay. Um, and I will never forget, the ticket for the event was 10K USD. To me, that was unfathomable at the time. 
Then, at the event, he's like, guys, I'm opening doors for my private elite mastermind where we're going to be in Vienna, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, I put the admission slip on your desk. I flip it. It was 125,000 US dollars just to enroll into the program. And I was like, no way anyone's going to invest in this. No way anyone's going to do this. And he's like, go. Everyone, like the whole room lined up with checks ready to go in. And I was like, it like it blew my mind. I was like, dude, what is going on? Like this is insane. Like I was like tripping out. This makes no sense. And they were like all ready to go. So that kind of opened my world to high ticket. Then after that time, like I just felt like I needed to change in life. So summer before I went to Columbia for vacation, two week vacation, party, saw friends, all that kind of stuff. And I was like, you know what? I think I could live here. Beautiful weather, same time zone as Toronto, much cheaper cost of living. So anyways, I decided, okay, you know what? I'll pack my bags and go. Seven weeks into being into Columbia, pandemic hits, bang. And they literally say, we've closed the borders to Canada, you can no longer go back. So I'm like, oh shit, like what do I do here? I was in a third world country, not knowing the language, in the middle of a pandemic. And I was like, okay, well, let's make the most of this. So I literally, for six months, same thing, put myself in isolation and just worked. Work the work, and that's when I actually transitioned from agency to consulting. Like, I'm tired of like 10 people bossing me around all the time, telling me like, go do this. I'm gonna switch this to consulting. And then for that six months, completely trained. I gave all my clients to other agency owners, transformed the business, and went full time into consulting. And then that's kind of when like things start taking off. Like, I, I don't know, if God or whatever you want to call it, but like at that time in the pandemic, everyone realized they needed to go online. LinkedIn was like the perfect thing. So all the kind of stars aligned, and then things started like taking off and. Well, thank God now we're almost a seven-figure company and would hopefully by the next in the next 60 days we will be. It's been a long road to get where I'm at, but what I'm really trying to do is I'm not trying to say this to brag or anything. I'm doing this to inspire you because like first of all, number one lesson, don't believe everything you see on social media. I was like the promised child on social media at 22, and like my whole life was like falling apart on the back end. That was number one. Number two is you will experience bumps. And number two, be very cognizant when things are not when you're in this mundane cycle. Right? Understand that there's a difference between being in a mundane cycle and doing the boring work. Because boring work actually gets you to success. Like sending your messages, posting your content, doing all that's that stuff you need to do. But if you feel yourself like so, stuck in some zombie cycle, become aware. Right? I realized I was in a zombie cycle when I was running the blog. I realized I was in a zombie cycle when I was running like the agency. Now I feel more aligned than ever. Every shift I made was just aligning to who I really was. I'm a quite an extroverted person. I like to talk, I like to present. You know, I like to show my face on social media, all these kind of things, but every decision I made was getting me more aligned. And maybe I make another alignment change down the road, who knows? But right now I feel very aligned with where I'm going and because of that alignment, and when you kind of hit that perfect middle ground of alignment with who you are and what you're doing, you'll really scale to that next level. Really, It almost happened like instantaneously. Money does not grow, income does not grow linearly, income grows exponentially. You're going to hit blocks where you're like, I can't break this part, and then you're going to ex massively exceed it. And you need to be very conscientious about this, right? So like, when I switched from agency consulting, I went from like 10K months to like, wow, we're hitting 30 instantly. It was like triple, 300% increase. And it just kept going, going, and going, and going. And I was like, oh, well, this is really interesting. And it's all because I was very aligned with it. So yeah, well, pretty much wrap this up here, but like I said, my full message to you guys is just, the journey is long, it's fun, but just keep working to be in more alignment with yourself. So find that alignment with where you're loving what you're doing and you're being financially rewarded for it, and I'm telling you, it will scale really, really quickly. And one final thing that I just forgot to say is that my biggest mistake that I forgot to mention as well, beyond getting evicted, beyond everything, was that I was too stubborn to not take a mentor early on. Right? I was 21 years old and said, at the time there wasn't an abundance of coaching programs and stuff like that, but at the time I said, you know what? I can figure this all on my own. And what took me those three years of gruesome like hell, being evicted, uh, going broke, bank accounts, running up credit card, all that could have been avoided if I just found someone who was ahead of me and just learned. I learned the hard way. Like what took me three years to get to where, like to even get to a stable point could have been achieved in six months. Right? And without all that anguish. So I think all of you are doing the right thing by being a part of this program. And you know, whether you stay setters forever or you go into other things or whatever, just understand the finding the mentors and making the right decisions at this point is crucial. And I think all of you are in the foundational building phase of your, I mean, from what I'm seeing, maybe some of you are ahead, but in this foundational period of building yourself on success with your career, continue to invest in mentors. Even now, Aaron called me out like a few months ago. He came and visited me and called me. He's like, bro, you gotta get a mentor, bro. You gotta do this. And like I did the next day. How did you stay consistent in the process?
when you weren't seeing the results? Yeah, I think that's probably the most important question that could be asked at this point. And so you've got to divide it and look at this just inputs and outputs. Inputs are things you can control, outputs are things you cannot control. Inputs are how many messages you send, how many offers you make, how much content you publish. Outputs are someone actually saying yes, someone agreeing to a call. You know, these are you can't go into someone's pocket, pull out their credit card, and make them pay. You don't have that control. So the key that I would advise you and everyone else here is just focus on what you can control. Like that is the most important thing. Like if something is out, there's zero point in stressing about something that's not in your control. And when you focus on the inputs and you do a good job, the outputs will meet you halfway. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this talk inspired you to go out and succeed. So I'm here at the Intercontinental in downtown Toronto with the Mastermind event people. We got everyone. Aaron has so graciously decided to treat us all. He's like, all right, guys, whatever you want on the menu, it's on him. So I will not hesitate to take advantage. I'm thinking two burgers, pizza, <laughs> pasta. It's bulking season if Aaron's paying, you know? So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I'm just playing. I'm playing. I'm not going to do that.